views. So I am concerned that he is uh, an all things to all men candidate. And I do think that what we need, and I'm sure you agree with this, is somebody like Ron Paul who has clear views and, uh, to my mind, very sensible views on what now needs to be done. It's very clear that the number one issue is to reduce and reduce substantially the annual deficit of the US government because you're now borrowing very large amounts of money from China and anyone who borrows money from another government is no longer a free and sovereign nation. You become in hock to your debtor and your debtor then starts calling the tune. I haven't heard enough from any of the candidates except Ron Paul about this very serious issue. Romney has been more or less entirely silent on it. And I don't think that's acceptable either. All right, so, so, so there's the perspective. And I see what you're saying. If he's not going to win, why not try to influence? And I guess if Ron Paul did get a cabinet position and actually, I, I just don't see them doing that. If he gets strung along and doesn't get it, we know they got manipulated. Uh, and I just think my gut is, Lord Moncton, the, the supporters aren't going to buy that. They're not, it's not that they don't understand it. I just think if Romney hadn't supported abortion and carbon taxes and written Obamacare, then it would be a little different if he was a little more mainline conservative. He's so liberal so globalist in the past, but then I see your argument, we'll get Ron Paul in there as a counterbalance. I mean, I understand those perspectives. It's just that Ron Paul's never compromised on anything, and I would see it as a compromise here. Uh, you know what? We've got to reserve judgment this far. My only issue is that the campaign played along, even though I looked at it politically and said they can't use delegates and then try to unseat him. That would be seen as stealing an election. But they use that, I guess, to keep the momentum going, uh, and, and that it would then be a betrayal. That's my issue, Christopher Moncton, Lord Moncton. I, I can see that uh, very much. And I think we now have to hope and pray that Mitt Romney, who does look like ending up as the official Republican candidate, is going to toughen up his, his act and raise his game. I think he does have one advantage, which is these days, frighteningly rare in politics, he has set up and grown and run what is now a very successful international business. And at least, therefore, he knows how many beans make five, <laughs> which is more than can be said of the amateur. I think that's the epithet everybody's now using of President Obama after a book by uh, a, a New York Times journalist, of all people, called The Amateur, describing the really catastrophic, catastrophic performance of Obama in office. How Obama thinks there's 47 states. Uh, absolutely. Let's shift gears out of that. I mean, not 47, 57 states. I'm now channeling Obama, not 50. Uh, Lord Moncton, uh, shifting gears, what's the latest you've got breaking from Hawaii? Well, it's very clear now that somebody in the Hawaiian Health Department knew that the document that now appears on the White House website is a forgery. It's clear it is a forgery, that much uh, we've discussed before. But it's now clear, and I did an analysis on this for my fellow hereditary peers, those are the people who don't have a seat or vote but still take an interest in politics, uh, but have a historic connection with the House of Lords, and we, you know, I, I do papers for them from, from time to time and they do them for me. And what I've discovered is that when you analyze exactly what happened, how this document came to be requested, how it found its way to the White House, it's very clear that even if the White House didn't know this document was a forgery, and there's a certain amount of evidence that actually it didn't, there's a lot of evidence that, in fact, it's really compelling and overwhelming evidence that somebody, and I don't know who, in the Hawaiian Health Department knows that document to be a forgery. And everybody from the governor downwards is very, very carefully looking the other way. But I don't think that's now going to be a sustainable position. I've had advice from a, a constitutional expert about that. He said, first of all, those who try to say this is an inconsequential matter, an issue that doesn't really matter, it's a historical clause in the Constitution that no longer has any relevance, these, he says, flatly are incorrect. You amend the Constitution or you abide by it. And what should now happen is there must be an opening up of the official record of Mr. Obama's birth to independent forensic scrutiny here in Hawaii. Unless and until that is done, there is now, in my view, sufficient doubt about where he was born 
to justify even his supporters from withholding sure. their vote from him at the next election on the ground that they can't be sure that he is the president and that he himself by endorsing the posting up on the White House website of a document which is a manifest and maladroit forgery, and then by doing absolutely nothing about it when an eminent sheriff has found, uh, after six months' examination, that it is a forgery. They, they can now, and I think must now, legitimately, withhold their vote from this man unless and until he clears the matter up by taking the blindingly obvious step he has not taken so far, which is to say to the department in Hawaii, come on, let's open up the forensic record, uh, to the original record to forensic inspec inspection by both sides so that there can be no more nonsense about this. The fact that neither he nor Hawaii have done this and that he, in fact, as his very first executive order when he took office on the first full day, of his holding office was an order sealing all his personal past records, a most extraordinary first executive order by a president, narcissistic in the extreme, you may think. But why did he do this? He did this presumably, inferentially, because he has something to hide. Because it was the sort of Damocles hanging over his head and expanding. The mainstream media acts like we've been given proof after proof. First, they said we'd always been given the original when it was clearly a receipt that wasn't even a copy of the original. They said nothing else existed. Then they gave us the ridiculous fake. Then Abercrombie, right before that, the governor of Hawaii, where you are, said to the reporter, well, I've looked, it's not there, Obama has a problem. That's a quote. A few months later, it pops up. They never let forensic inspection happen. The AP and others had a different weird copy all different colors, different fonts. I mean, this is crazy. And the fact that they've sealed all their records, they said it was a conspiracy theory that he'd never been named Barry Sotero. That was later confirmed. Uh, the records cut out in Kenya, they say looks like theft. There wouldn't be records if it hadn't been there. Uh, this is pretty scary, the, the blackmail potential of this, Lord Moncton. Well, this is another big problem. There are people who know exactly what the true position is at least two, as far as I can track down, here in Hawaii, know exactly what that position is. And you know, it would not surprise me, given the visit here last week by Sheriff Arpaio's uh, cold case posse, it would not surprise me at all that they are on the trail of these people and will eventually be working with the Hawaii Police Department to feel some collars, as we say, in, in Britain. I don't think this is going to go away now, and I think it's not going to go away for one rather startling reason, which was given to me by the, the very eminent constitutional expert whom I consulted. He said, I tell you what, Lord Moncton, stay there, we got to go to break. Tell us about this big bombshell on the other side, and then we'll continue with phone calls. Adam Kakesh popping in. Lord Moncton is our guest. We'll give you his website when we come back. For a long time, you've heard me talk about building your own food supply. And a quick update from Lord Moncton right now. We're almost out of time with him. I'd like to welcome him back next week for a full hour if he can do it. We've got all this breaking Ron Paul news. And I've got some other important news I need to hit before this hour's up. So what was the big intel you got from a constitutional scholar, Lord Moncton? Now, it's very interesting. This is, this is an experienced lawyer, long in practice in constitutional law. He's appeared before the Supreme Court. He knows his way around. And he said that any defendant who was accused of a criminal offence created by a law signed by President Obama into law is entitled to raise in his defence the question whether or not the president is the president, the law, the law, and therefore the offence he's charged with, an offence at all. And he can insist on his right to go in the person of forensic um, experts acting for his attorneys to have a look at the original record in Hawaii to satisfy himself that that record is indeed a genuine record of your president's birth. And this is virtually bound to happen. According to this lawyer, he said it's only a matter of time before attorneys for one defendant or another accused of some crime signed into law by the president. That information could be subpoenaed. Of this defense, absolutely, they, they, they have the absolute right. The president is Brady versus Maryland 49 years ago, in which it was said that the prosecution has to facilitate uh, the defense by making sure that any information or documentation in their hands or under their control or accessible to them 
which in any way might tend to exonerate or exculpate the accused, must be made available to the defence. It's an absolute overriding right of the defence. And this is going to happen. It's only a matter of time, he says. It may happen between now and the election. It may happen after the election. But at some point, it is going to happen. And then the whole shabby house of cards is going to come down. And in the meantime, Alex, if anyone wants to find out more about this and realise that you and I are not just pointy-headed birthers, but there is really good reason to doubt this, then I have sent uh, to your website, infowars.com, a copy of the briefing paper that I wrote for my fellow hereditary peers. So it is available for anyone to just download. Oh, good. Let me, let me stop you, Lord Moncton. I'll find out what address you sent that to to make sure we post it at infowars.com. But we can also find it at scienceandpublicpolicy.org. Is it up there? You won't find it there because it's not really within their subject matter, but it is within yours. So I've sent it to your, your folk. Chris and Jaron have both got it. And so you'll be able to put it up on your website. Yes, sir. We will post it right now. It's a 20-page document. We did get it. I don't believe it's posted yet. It'll be posted by Adon. Uh, Kurt's on vacation right now, right now at Infowars.com. It'll be up there in the next five minutes. Excellent. So anyone who wants to study this for themselves and see why it is that I think that Sheriff Arpaio is probably right. And I have independently talked to forensic experts on everything from the typewriting to the electronic layers of which the document is composed. You'll find a summary of the points that impressed me as suggesting that there is something very desperately wrong with the document now appearing on the White House website. And let's be clear about this. It is not we, Alex, who are raising... Uh, the, the, the issue here. It is President Obama who's raised this issue here, raised these doubts, created these legitimate doubts about where he was born by putting up on the White House website a manifestly, obviously bogus document. You'll see that from my peers' briefing paper when you get it. It's an obviously bogus document. There is no argument about it. It is definitely bogus. And the, the question is this. He knows now that a serious sheriff is saying it's bogus. He knows now that this is spreading. It can't be put back in its box. Court cases happening all over America. Well, it's just like the global warming crowd being caught in fraud after fraud. Their house of cards is imploding. These are forgerous fraudsters. And it's the same people. This is the thing. What has happened is that the left has now become so fixated on whatever the party line happens to be that they are now incapable of recognizing that there even is such a thing as right and wrong or true and false. The only thing they recognize is what is expedient that backs the party line and what is inexpedient because it doesn't. And that's the only measure that they now use. There is no morality left in the left. They've abandoned all reason. They've abandoned all understanding that some things are true and some things are not true. Some things are right and some things are not right. And until they get back to that, they are going to continue the long, inexorable decline that began under Ron Reagan and Margaret Thatcher with the collapse of Soviet communism. And soon we will have the collapse of communism here once your president